Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about a, uh, a question that I'm asked quite often, surprisingly. I got another question about this uh, just a few hours ago and I thought, you know what, that's that's a lot of this question. So let me go ahead and just tackle it real quick. So thanks for tuning in. Welcome to the channel. If you are new, my name is Wade. We're here at Black Tie Barn. We cover a lot of different topics on this channel in regards to candle making, running a candle business, and so on. If any of that interests you, first I would encourage you to uh, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. Be sure to hit that to bell notification as well so that you're alerted when I do post them. But also I would encourage you to check out all the other videos. There's quite a few already out there. I think we're over 100 videos now. So uh, so have fun browsing through and hopefully you find things that interest you. Today's topic, today's video is about the question of how long can I keep my wax melted in the tank ready to use? This, this question has become popular recently for one major reason, and that is people are getting away from the double boil method, which is where you add your wax to a pouring pot or a pitcher of some type, and then you put it and a little bit of water into another uh, pot full of um, boiling water, and that will cause your wax to melt. That that method is kind of slowly getting faded out, uh, and people are turning to like Presto pots and uh, digital boils and wax melters and things like that to hold a lot more wax at a single time, um, allowing you to work a little bit more uh, quickly and efficiently. And because of that, they hold more wax, uh, people are asking, well, how long can I keep that wax in there melted and ready to go? Do I need to turn it on just when I want to use it and then shut it back down and then the next day do it again? And, you know, it takes a while for something that large to heat up all your wax. So that's that's what I'm going to discuss. And if you stick around to the later part of this video, I'm going to show you a little bit of bonus footage and share some bonus information for you about what happens if you do expose your wax to too high of a temperature for too long. So stick around, don't leave too early or you'll miss out on that. It is quite interesting. Now, let's back up just a little bit, especially for those of you brand new to candle making and maybe haven't even made any candles yet. Most wax is going to come in really a couple different forms. The most popular is slab forms, just essentially just that, a slab of wax that just needs to be cut up into blocks or chunks or however you want to use it. And then there's also the flake kind, which is mostly with some of your soy waxes like uh, golden wax 464 for example a bag like this and that is how most of us receive our wax uh, they come in bags and boxes and you basically just get out what you need per batch but as we were just talking about a lot of us do keep wax uh, large amounts of wax into different type of tanks or melters and so how long can you leave it in there what's okay think about this for starters wax when it is warmed up obviously melts to a liquid state and then as it cools it returns back to a, a harder state, a firmer, more solid state. But the act of melting wax from that solid state to a liquid is not an unnatural process. In other words, it is totally fine to be in a liquid state. In fact, most of your very large candle manufacturers and wax manufacturers keep their wax in a liquid state for extended periods of time. In fact, if you were to buy drums of wax from these manufacturing companies, uh, from these wax suppliers directly to you, they wouldn't send you necessarily uh, a ton of solid wax. It, you can actually get it by the drum in liquid form. So the first answer to the question is, yes, it's totally fine. You can keep your wax in liquid form for a, quite a long time. I mean, I, I don't know of, actually, I don't even know if there is a specific time that you can't go past. It is completely okay to stay in liquid form. The key, however, is at what temperature is it okay to keep it in a liquid form? Well, if any of you have used coconut oil, you'll know that coconut oil is not in liquid form, but as soon as you get it to room temperature, it becomes liquid. And then it firm back up again once it gets a little cooler than that. But it only takes room temperature or so to get to a liquid form. It waxes a higher melt point than that, and, and the specific melt point of your wax will depend on the type of wax you're using. They all vary. And so you want to find out what your melt point is, and then my recommendation, my suggestion would be to just have your wax melted and kept at that level right above the melt point or right at the melt point. Ideally, you would like the process to be a little faster to get your wax to the right temperature when you're ready to use it. And so if it's already in liquid form, it's not going to take long to get it up to the proper temperature to use to make candles. But you don't want to keep it at a high temperature, uh, the, the type of temperature that you would use to make candles for an extended period of time. For example, let's say you like to get your wax to about 195, 200 degrees when you're ready to start making candles. 
I wouldn't recommend keeping it at that high of a temperature for extended periods of time. But if your melt point of your wax is around 125, yeah, keep it about 130 or up to 140 even. Uh, and that'll, that'll be no problem to keep it that way. Obviously, you want to do it in a safe environment, a controlled environment. Don't turn on your Presto pod and then go to bed and forget that it's plugged in. That's not exactly considered a commercial grade wax melter. So it's not really meant to do that. Long story short, whatever that minimum temperature is that you can get your wax to to become liquid is good enough to keep, keep it in that range uh, for extended periods of time, especially if you're the type that are going to make candles throughout the day, all day long, if you've got a pretty established business and you make candles every single day, then a lot of companies are keeping on their melters throughout the week. Uh, and so that's completely fine to do. All right. I had promised you in the first part of this video, a little extra bonus footage of what can happen if you leave on your melters and, mel and, and leave your wax in a liquid state at too high of a temperature for too long. So this footage here that I'm going to show you Parts of it's a little gross, so uh, just just keep that in mind. Uh, that's that's your warning. Um, and also know that the wax I'm showing you is a soy wax. And I know everyone thinks of soy being this like perfectly clean, uh, there's nothing wrong with the type of wax. And that's not really the focus or debate of, of this particular video. I only bring that up to show you that even soy wax can look kind of gross because it is an organic compound. It's an organic material. And if certain parts of that material are heated up for extended periods of time at a very high temperature, you can start getting some separation, you can start getting some organic breakdown, and you start to get some like sludge looking material. And it's it's quite disturbing. So <laughs> this is this is what it looks like. And uh just to let you know, I kept this at about 200 degrees. Uh I, I fluctuated a little bit, 190 up to even like 210. And I did it for about a week straight, um, maybe even a little longer than that, just because I was curious and I wanted to see what would happen, how how that wax would respond. I will say I did it with paraffin wax and didn't really get any of this. The wax pretty much looked exactly the same as it did when it started, uh, but the soy wax really did start having some organic breakdown and it was quite interesting. So I just thought I'd share that footage with you to see what it looks like. If you ever see your wax doing this type of thing, uh, my my suggestion would be, first of all, to reach out to your manufacturer to have see if they have any suggestions uh, they might say, yeah, you need to go ahead and get rid of it. Or they might say, well, you just need to reheat it and get it mixed up pretty good. Because sometimes with soy wax, you just get separation of all the oils and the fats and they just need to be reincorporated. But in this case, it was already heated to a high temp for a long time. And even after stirring, it did not want to reincorporate. So uh, I, I wouldn't be using this, this little amount of wax that uh, I had melted down for that long. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you uh, learned something a little bit more about how long you can melt your wax and at what temperature, how long can it stay in that form. So as always, thank you all for tuning in. I, I appreciate you all for being here and as also for following me and engaging with me on the other social platforms. As a reminder, in the description below, you can find those links to my other social platforms, Instagram, uh, brand new on TikTok, no content posted yet, but, but I am on there if you want to go ahead and jump on. But yeah, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and pretty much everywhere. So thanks again. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hope to see you on the next video. Thanks.